This is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast, and that's right. Indiana Fever, they fall. Las Vegas Aces wasn't their night tonight. The Indiana Fever uh, didn't come out the gate, but uh, we're going to talk about it. This is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. Christy Sides is on the hot seat. I repeat, Christy Sides is on the hot seat. Now, this may just be the Money Mike's hot seat, but you know what? I got to ask myself, Christy Sides on the hot seat, and let me let me kind of break this down, and let me take you where I'm going, and then you guys got to uh, appreciate the comments and come back and tell me how far off base I am, but uh, Christy Sides uh, has got to be on the hot seat, and I'll tell you why. I listened to Christy Sides in the press conference, and when you listen to Christy Sides, she talking about the future. She's talking about the future of how great the Indiana Fever are going to be in the future. Not now, not now. No, no, no. Christy Sides doesn't want to be now. Chris talked about the physicality that he says display tonight. Um, what was it about their defense, their physicality that kind of just knocked you all, I guess, off a little bit, especially in that second quarter? Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're a really good team, right? We'll start there. Um <laughs> They're a really, really good team. and they- she Sides not coming in with a championship mindset. Now, of course, we got to go to the box score. we got to look at this thing and say, well, what happened? The Las Vegas Aces beat the Indiana Fever. There's no doubt about it, 86-75, right? And uh, Asia Wilson, you know, took 28 shots, 11-28. And you got to look at it, went in there, didn't take a three-pointer. 12 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals, 3 blocks, finished with 27 points and a plus 5. Okay, but you won by 11, so she didn't win the ball game for you. And uh, when you take a listen to Christy Sides and you hear her talk, um, Christy Sides is sending a different message, a message that doesn't equate with the game you just played. You know, that's, I mean, we're we're trying to, to make those adjustments, you know, what's hard is this is kind of the way we've been playing. And so like to, you know, these guys, Caitlin, Kelsey, um, they've been playing those kind of minutes. So it's just really hard to try to keep that momentum and flow going to keep it the same. Um, But yeah, you know, Timmy coming in um, with AB and foul trouble, I thought Dantas, you know, probably could have given her more minutes late. Her and, uh, and Timmy playing together would have been, you know, okay. I thought Liz gave us some good minutes. She was pretty, you know, Got some big rebounds for us. Um, E-Dub in the first half, you know, hit a couple shots. Um, you know, just got to find time for them. You know, we're just looking ahead, trying to, you know, this is a playoff series. for. And I am confused. Does Christy Sides have a championship mindset? Now, a championship mindset means you can come in and win now. And she's looking at how great the team is, how great the team is. Well, there's a couple ways you can look at that, and I'm going to come back to the box score, but I, I, I listen to Christy Sides and how great the team. Well, wow, that's a great team. That's a great team. No, that's a great coach. That's a great coach that you coached against. You don't need to throw it to the team because I always tell you it's the horse trainers, okay, the coaches to get the teams ready to play. And for Christy Sides, uh, the horse training ability I, you know what? I got to question some of it. I saw some things in tonight's game that I hadn't seen before. First of all, it's doggy dog battle to battle. And Caitlin checks herself out of the game. Now, I don't, for whatever reason, I don't know why Caitlin checked herself out of the game, but she did. And then on top of that, um, somehow you started mixing rotation players in. And this could be because. Caitlin checked herself out of the game, but Christy Sides didn't mention that. Caitlin did, but the point of it is the championship mindset of hearing Christy Sides speak is not to win now. Uh, Caitlin's night, obviously not her best night. It's still 16.6 assists. She said she was tired a little, and I guess went back. We watched her walk out and then came come back. Was there anything to that? And then in general, how did she kind of overcome, clearly a tough defense, right? And she's working like crazy. Yeah. Is that what that was, that tiredness? Oh, I think most of her shots, if you go back and look at them, they all hit the front of the rim. And I think that overtime game the other night just kind of really, uh, 
I mean, they did. There were times they looked really, you know, they were tired. And that, you know, when your shot's falling short like that, that's just a, a huge indication of that. So, you know, got to get in with our, our trainers and get what they need. That's what tomorrow's going to be about and just some, some adjustments up on the court. She's caught up in there's a process, and this is the process that we're going to go through, how we're going to get there. Now, what did I see? Or what did I, what have I seen and uh, why why Christy Side's going to be on the hot seat is um, I haven't seen Caitlin Clark. If you ask me, I haven't seen Caitlin Clark have an open shot since the start of the season. Okay, and that and that's amazing to me because everybody gets an open look, but she's the only one in the game of basketball that doesn't get an open look. It's so hard. And, and if you watch her and you watch her play, you got to understand something, folks, here with Okay, Christy sides and how she's looking at it because the way she's looking at it, it really doesn't make sense. Now, how did the Indiana Fever lose the game tonight? How did the Indiana Fever lose the game tonight? I'm going to take a pause. How did the Indiana Fever lose the game tonight? Because I want to hear if you're thinking the way I'm thinking, and I'm going to tell you right away. Indiana Fever lost the game tonight by bench point. Right in the gate from bench points. The Las Vegas Aces bench scored 30 points. Okay, 30 points right off the bench. So how did we lose the game? Indiana Fever scored 11. Okay, so he got outscored on the bench 30 to 11. Okay, and these these are the things that I really am shocked that Christy Sides can't point out. I won the... The last two years because they just go out and play so well together as a team. Those last couple of years, like they were just, you know, if it wasn't your night, it was somebody else's night, and it, and that's just what they did. And I think that is just growth. We don't, you know, we have the young talent, and they're still figuring all that out. Um, I think their leadership, you know, just the way they've grown. Um, I think they won a championship after four years, five years of getting those picks. Um, it takes time. You know, our, our goal is to try to keep this group together and, and build exactly what, you know, they have built, built and also like where Minnesota was several years ago and what they built. Um, you know, that's our goal. I mean, you could look at this. We got to get stops. We got to get stops. We got to get stops. You know, and, well, if you got to get stops, you got to know how to get stops. Now, I'm, a, I'm, I'm really putting her on this because I'm going to take you home. And uh, you guys, like I said, I for the – for the Indiana Fever fans and the WNBA fans, I enjoy your comments, okay? And they've got me where I've got to say hit the like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing. And we're going to keep pushing this out because I was wrong. As you guys know, in June, you got me. June, you got me. You got me, June. June got on me and said, Mike, no, 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 just not there. Now, let me, let me go where I'm going to go with this because I am just blown away how Christy Sides can talk about the future now and can talk about a great team. Well, that's not a great team. That's a great coach. So every time you go to the say it's a great team, you're just saying it's a great coach. So Becky Hammond is a better coach than Christy Sides. Okay, Cheryl Reeve is a better coach than Christy Sides. Okay, I can go over there. Noel is a better coach, Seattle Storm, than Christy Sides. I mean, we keep walking down because it's all going to come down to coaching, okay? And at the end of the day, I haven't seen Caitlin Clark have an open shot. Now, I'm talking about an open shot, okay, since the season started. And I, I mean, I just haven't seen it. I mean, it, there's been open shots, but you got to look at how few, far, and in between, okay? So where, where did the fever end up? And, uh, boy, did they have fun tonight. I mean, this is really some good fun to me, and uh, you got to look at it, okay? Kelsey Mitchell stood out, 24 points, okay, minus 8, 9 and 19, uh, got in there and just couldn't catch a rhythm. Caught a rhythm, kept them going, but really couldn't catch a rhythm. Now, this Lexi Hall situation, we got to look at this, and we got to look at it from a different standpoint because that's why we don't have any punch off the bench. And, folks, if you remember... Uh, when I said the thing with bringing Lexi Hole off the bench and making Lexi Hole a starter, you're taking all your punch off the bench. But Lexi Hole may solve another problem for us because she may have to run the point three. Because if if really if you if you don't get 
Caitlin off the ball at some point in time during these games. I mean, get her off the ball and just let her run. Um, you you got to interchange that. We we can't continue to play. Okay, we're going to get a rebound because it doesn't matter. You got two guards, right? You got two. You got a one and a two. They they should be interchangeable, okay, in what they do, which means Kelsey can run it, Caitlin can run it, Kelsey can run it, Kate. Because if, you, if you're going to let them hammer down on the pressure, now, now here's the deal, okay? I don't know what happened. The game was getting live. Uh, looked at it. They shut Asia Wilson was the only one that could get a shot, okay? And then all of a sudden, we buzzed Caitlin out of the game. And, you know, Caitlin could have been tired, frustrated. I don't know. The shooting, energy shooting was not there. Um for Caitlin, and you know what? Five turnovers, six assists. I mean, three rebounds. There was nothing energetic. Now, what did they do? They ran for 94 feet of ball pressure. Okay, so you talk about playoff basketball now, you know. You're going to get 94 feet of ball pressure. You're going to have to have a point of one or two and a three, okay? And Lexi could bring the ball up, so whoever's guarding Lexi, you're going to have to change that and run it through there. You're going to have to run it through Mitchell. You're going to have to interchange it. But Christy Sides doesn't quite get that, I believe. And and this may be me not really seeing the game through the eyes that I want to look at it. But I, I, I noticed that Christy Sides is talking about, well, you got to build a team. Now, what do I mean by build a team, guys? Let, let's be honest, okay? Let, let, let's, let's get in there and let's call it what it is. You want to continue building. Because for some reason, you don't believe the team is good enough now. And I don't get that. I don't get that. I don't get that at all. And I'm still trying to figure that out. Because how can you say we're going we're gonna to look in the future, we're going to look in the future because the team is not good enough now. Okay, so let, let, me, let me put that, let me quantify that for you. And making sure that you understand, I believe the team is good enough now. I don't think we're waiting for anything else to ta- to happen than what hasn't already happened now. And you, and you got to ask yourself that, right? So here, let me ask you this, okay? If Don Staley was coaching the Indiana Fever, and I'm going to go in extreme on you here, okay? I'm going to go in extreme. If, would she be thinking that the Indiana Fever are going to win two, three? It's a process. You got to build this team up. Or would Don Staley walk right through the door and say, let's go, Boston. We're about to win a championship. You, We're about to win right now. What do you think Boston's going to say, right? I mean, I, I took you to the stream. She's at South Carolina. She's not going anywhere. But I wanted to take you to that extreme to understand what Christy Sides is doing. And this is this is not good. Okay, and you have to know there is a process to everything. But when you get to this stage and you got the Indiana fever and you got Caitlin going one for 10, okay, I mean, at some point you got to just say, you know, Caitlin didn't shoot it well. I mean, Caitlin shot one for 10 for the three point line. Okay, that's 10%. Okay, you call it like it is and you don't sugarcoat it. Or if you keep looking towards it's a process. Somebody else is going to enjoy your process, okay? I mean, it happens, folks. It happens, okay? And you, you for the folks in Indiana, you know, but you benefited. I mean, Tony Dungy was the coach of the Tampa Bay Bucks. He couldn't win. They brought in Gruden, won a Super Bowl, but he came to Indiana, won a Super Bowl. This one's going to be the Christie side is going to think all this is going to happen in a certain time frame. And when it doesn't, then we've got a problem because we don't know what to do. And then we start coming back and we start saying, well, we didn't really know and we didn't know what to do. So we just didn't. We play a certain way and we can't play any other way. Right. So and, and, and you think, well, coach, that's your job to have adjustments. Right. So you, you're sitting there and you're trying to go, well, what happened? Right. What happened? All right. And, and, and you got you got to know these things, because at some point it's going to come back to haunt you. And when it comes back to haunt you, what are you going to do? You're going to have to be ready. OK, to know, OK, these are the adjustments that I have to make. Now, 
if you keep thinking of you're going to win in the future and you don't try to win now, okay, the, this this is going to come back and bite you at some point. And when it comes back and bites you, you got to know that, well, I should have looked at this a little bit different, you know, and it would have been better for everyone, right? Because if you don't look at it different, then what are you going to do, right? Because the walls are going to close in on you at some point, and that's what's going to happen, okay, with Christy sides. The walls are going to close in, right? And when the walls start closing in, people make different decisions, right? And, and, and you guys got to know that. You guys already know that. You know the Indiana fever. I mean, if, if you look at the organization, they're going to go through changes, right? And when you start going through changes, you got to ask yourself, okay, how are we best going to look at this? What are we going to do differently? And how are we going to be, right? What are we going to be going forward? And that's the Indiana fever. They got to ask themselves that question because if I'm looking at it collectively now and you got Christy side saying, well, this is going to get better or this is going to change, you know, and I don't believe that. I don't believe that for a bit, right? And so when you get to that stage, and I'll give you an example, right? So you got Allison Barber was the actual president of the Indiana fever. Okay, she's going to step down at the end of the year. Okay, so that that that's a major, major change coming from the Indiana fever. Now, when you get that type of change and you got to bring in a new president, okay, what do you think the new president's going to be thinking about? Okay, what do you think the new president's going to be thinking about? It's going to be thinking about, well, if I got to run the Indiana fever and you want to give me the job, this is how I've got to do it and this is how I've got to get things done. Now, if that doesn't happen, Okay, and, and you have a transition like that where the president steps away and says, well, this is my end of the line. Okay, and then you got to look at Christy Sides and what are you doing? I think you're going to end up on the hot seat because there's going to be too much exposure. There's going to be too much exposure of coaching for Christy Sides. And when you get your team and you don't know, when you get outscored, their bench outscores is 30 points. Okay, they get 30 points, they give up off the bench. That tells me. Okay, for the Las Vegas Aces, the, you know, they got the second group wants nothing to do with the first group. That's the main thing I see. Okay, because they're coming off the bench and they're scoring. I mean, they're putting, and I always tell you with Hayes, don't let, don't ever let the game get to Hayes. I'll, I'll tell you, because Hayes is a sneaky player, came out plus 17, 12 points, three or four from the three-point line. That's a sneaky guard they got. Clark lit him up in the back end, just had fun, you know, four or six from the three-point line. And, you know, they, they they just really just took it down. Did they shoot it well? Well, they did. I mean, they, they, but not the 50-40. They got 44% from the field, but they got 44-5% from the three-point line. Okay, that's a huge thing. They still, and, you know, when you get to the turnovers in the defense, um, of the Indiana Fever, you got to look at it. They only turned the ball over eight times, right? So you get the Indiana Fever turned it over fourteen. But here's the deal that concerns me in the post: we got too many players, okay, left with contact files, okay. So you got Leah Boston files out of the game, but you got Nia Smith's only got one foul, folks, one foul. I mean that you got eighteen the eighteen fouls that you can utilize, right? But when you get back to it, you look at it, you you, you got to see that. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at his board because I always try to go to the box and see where I lost the game. Okay, so you got 18 fouls to go, and you got Nas nah, Smith's going to use one. Okay, and you got Dante that just checked in shortly, didn't really play. So I don't understand the shake in the lineup, the change that uh, happened, but it was a change. Okay, she didn't foul anybody. Okay, Katie Lou didn't foul anybody. Ben Beignet had four extra to give. Wheeler didn't follow anybody. And Wallace, and, and, and folks, the, the Wallace move, that was interesting. Okay, that's what I mean. You can put yourself on the hot seat. The Wallace move, the Wallace move by Christy Sides. Okay, so if I'm understanding, I'm hearing Caitlin saying I checked myself out of the game. Well, you don't really check yourself out of the game. That's when Christy Sides bangs the timeout. Hey, give me a timeout. What's up? What do, you, what do you mean you're checking yourself out of the game? Well, I'm tired. Okay, it's a timeout. Get you something to drink. Let's go. 
Okay, that that one there I didn't really get. And then by the time you got late in the game, okay, and here's where the shocking part was. And this this one got me. Okay, you got Caitlin Clark, you got Wallace, and you got Samuelson on the court at the same time. All right, you got you got to imagine that, folks. Right? You got Caitlin Clark. Okay, you got Wallace. Okay, and you got Samuelson on the floor at the same time. Okay, that didn't make any sense in this game that was played. I I, I couldn't find the reason of why you would do that. Okay, and I don't know what's going on with Samuelson. She can't run. Things are not there. Can't catch the ball. Can't get up and down the court. Okay, so you know, and when you when you're not playing, okay, and with Timmy, <clears throat> man, oh man, oh man, oh man, here's where you're gonna get to get your interchangeable guards because if you look at that play tonight where Timmy's trying to build to bring the ball up court, you're down six and the ball's getting swiped away. Okay, I mean that's because you're not running interchangeable guards and that's what can happen. So. I mean, the Indiana Fever, how do they lose the ball game tonight? Well, Christy Sides just said, well, they're a better team. It takes time. Uh, this is a process. You have to understand. Look at them. That's how they got that good. Okay, that's not a championship mindset. That, that to me, and I could be way off. I could be way off on a different rant, you could call it, but I took time. I've been watching this, so maybe it's a mini rant, but not a rant. But Christy Sides' mentality and connection with the team is really, really struggling. Okay, really struggling because if a team is going to take the demeanor of the coach, if the coach is going to demand greatness, they're going to always talk about greatness. That's what good coaches do. They demand it. They talk about it. Now you go do it. If a Coach is always talking about we're in developing and if we don't have an opportunity, this is how we play. It's too late to change. That means your pedigree, <clears throat> excuse me, that means your coaching pedigree is not very deep. And this is the chance, this is the risk that you take with a coach, okay, that doesn't have a championship pedigree, okay? They don't know what to do. That's why I went to the extreme. Not saying Don Staley's coming. We know that's not happened. Just to say, if Don Staley walked in the Indiana Fever building, <clears throat> okay, understand what I'm saying. If Don Staley walked in the Indiana Fever building, would her mindset be to win a championship now or her mindset would be to win a championship three years from now? That's where Christy Sides is. And I have just gotten to the point that everybody she plays against, that's a great team. That's a great team. That's a great team. No, you're saying that's a great coach. So you basically said Hammond's a better coach. Reeves is a better coach. Okay, every time, everywhere you go, you got a better coach. And at the end of the day, you, you, you're going to look at this and say, well, I, <clears throat> I didn't develop my bench. I didn't develop my bench. I didn't get a chance to get my bench like their bench. So what are we doing? What are we doing? Okay. And these are the questions that are going to get you on the hot seat because it's not going to be the way that the Indiana Fever, okay, didn't win the championship. That's not going to be the narrative. It's going to be the way the Indiana Fever lost. And can this be corrected? Or can Chris decides, is she the right coach to correct it? Now, coaches have championship mindset. They believe in what they do, and they got to go out, and they got to be great at it. Okay, this isn't college. <laughs> See, the reason you can always talk about development in college because the students got to go to class. Okay, you're, this is the pros. Your full-time job is what you do. You don't do anything else. So if the students got to, in college, and I say the students, Boston, Caitlin, all of them went to college, had to wake up and didn't have to go to class. That's a whole lot of time they have to do something. And you're asking for rest and time. I have no idea why you're saying that because you should be peaking and just playing it. Now, if you don't want to get into load management, I mean, let's be honest, like, I mean, Becky Hammond has to do what she has to do. But, I mean, she sits Kelsey Plum for a day. She sits Asia Wilson. 
Asia Wilson, who's supposed to have an ankle injury, didn't look injured to me. So you got to figure this thing out. But you know what? You got to do it from the championship level. And it's hard if you got a coach, never been a head coach, going to try to go win a championship in the WBA. That's a high level to start at because the coaches you're coaching against, you're going to be in a fantasy world. That's why you're talking so highly of them. You're not trying to beat them. You're trying to get a job in case you lose your job. That, that's really what that comes. I'll repeat that because they're not trying to beat the other team. You're trying to make sure you get a job in case you don't have a job. Okay. And that's the life of professional sports. Okay. And it doesn't take long. I mean, look at Jim Harbaugh over with the San Diego Chargers. I mean, he's got a championship mindset that he's had over there, over at Michigan. He comes in in the NFL. He still wins games. He hasn't lost an opening day game in a while. So you're going to, you, the Indiana Fever can't talk playoff basketball if they're not ready to get in the playoffs and play playoff basketball. You might as well just lay down and lose and go ahead and go home and say, well, okay, we'll see everybody next year because this doesn't make any sense. Tonight didn't make any sense. You started out, you're in the ball game, but you don't get it back to where it is. You leave Boston out for a longer stretch. Okay, then you ever could have had it, and you could have just utilized her. Okay, the foul trouble didn't matter because you got two other posts to run in there, and they got you got to use all the fouls. If you're gonna, if you're not gonna use all the fouls, then then what are we doing? Okay, you get eighteen, and you use what nine? So you got fifty percent more. You got in in the tank. You got to use the whole tank. You got to empty the tank. Katie Lou oh for two. Got to figure that one out. Dantas, I don't know, four minutes. I don't know if it's foot speed, couldn't play in the post. Wheeler, I felt you should have stayed with it longer. Uh, went in there two for three, one for two. Uh, got a rebound, but then you went to Wallace and said, well, I'm going to give you minutes too. And when you get them all on the floor, I mean, let's, let's be honest, you get them all on the floor at the same time. I mean, the whole bench is minus. So there's nowhere to go. I mean, you don't have anything from top to bottom. Only player that came in there and played and played tough was Nyad Smith. And Smith came out a plus two. So I got to applaud you, Neil, because uh, you went three for six. You got six rebounds, one assist, one steal. You got two bucks. And you were ready to get in the dogfight, okay? You were ready to get in the dogfight. Boston got in trouble. So that's when you got to go with what you got. Lexi Hall, this is the deal with Lexi Hall. I'd start thinking about Lexi Hall being the point three. I really would. I'd start thinking about that in a hurry because you got to have somebody else bring the ball up, and I don't know for the life of me, Kelsey Mitchell doesn't bring the ball up. I I, I don't get that one, and uh, Lexi Hall, they got to relieve the pressure. I mean, because you know what? They've already next put you on notice. We're going 94 feet against Kaitlyn. We're going to run three guards at her. We got five guards here on the fever, so we can keep running them at you till you get tired. Okay, we're going to exhaust you because we got you under ball pressure all night long. And I'm going to be honest, like I said earlier, I don't think Caden Clark has took an open shot in three months. Okay, I mean, I mean, you want to compare some things. You want to look at it. I mean, you got to work for things. But look at Williams on Minnesota. I mean, gets open shots. You look at an SQ, she's going to get some open shots. I mean, Caitlin just hasn't had an open shot in three months. And it's the pedigree of Christy Sides. I mean, you got somebody else do the game plan, okay, which is normal. I get I get that piece of it. Somebody else can do the game plan. The one takes offense, one takes defense, and the scouts, okay, they bring it together. They got to bring you the wrong, the right information, detailed enough to go in there and win. I mean, that's the name of the game is winning, okay. You got you to gotta have the experience at it. And you don't really do on-the-job training at the WNBA level. Most coaches, I will say, don't get their first head coaching job is in the WNBA. If they did, you'd have 5 million applicants lined up to get the job, right? So you got to work your way through the process she internally did. Now, is she over her head? Okay, and I'm saying the hot seat because I believe she is over her head. And as you can see by her comments in the press conference, it just doesn't connect. And if you can't connect the dots, you can't win games. You, you're the horse trainer. It's your job to prepare the team, your job to get the players ready, your job to make the adjustments that you need to do. 
It's your job to give players rest that you feel need rest. Doesn't matter if you treat them differently, okay? Sometimes players get a day off from practice. You know why? Because a coach understands championship. You win because players got to get rest, okay? Now, don't get me wrong. Nobody goes, I can go back in history like, uh, you know, Red Arback, the general manager and uh, outstanding historian of basketball with the Boston Celtics. I mean, he used to give Bill Russell days off. Okay, and Bill Russell would read the newspaper while everybody else would practice. Why? Because Bill Red Arbeck says if you can do what he does and you get the numbers he gets, you can read the paper too. So you get, everyone gets treated differently. But uh, I tell you what, Chrissy Sides got to figure it out. And if you don't figure it out, you're going to get even more embarrassing on national television because you're in the playoffs. And when you make the playoffs, you thought eyes all, all eyes were on you before. All eyes are about to be on you now. This is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. I thank you for joining me. Had to take a moment. Chrissy Sides puts herself back on the hot seat. Just doesn't understand the connection between the team, what's going on. Does, can't explain how I'm losing ball games other than that's a great team, which says that's a better coach than I am. It is what it is. You know what? You get what you pay for in this business. All things are possible to those who believe. This is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast, and we wanted to just recap that and just give you our opinion. It's my opinion, but if it turns the truth, uh, I've given you the facts before it happens. President Allen Barber, as you all, some may know, some, some may not, resigned. At the end of the season, she's going to say, call it quits. I'll let you guys take it from here. She understands the regime is changing. And as the regime changes, so does the person now. So we'll see you soon. And always, you know, just try to keep an open mind. And we thank you, the fans. We thank you for the comments. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.